Welcome to part four, where we're going to create a Brickify digital asset. Now that the recipe is working and the nodes are wired together properly, you're going to wrap up some of the nodes to create a single Houdini digital asset node. Now you can share the network with parameters from inside the asset promoted to the top level to create an interface that can generate unique results each time the asset is used. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, let's right click on this and uh, expose the inputs. Uh, we need access to those nodes so we can save them uh, so that we can make sure they're part of the asset. When they're hidden like that, then it's you can't actually select them. So we're gonna we're gonna move the teapot over here. We're gonna select all the other nodes, and we're gonna go asset new digital asset from selection. We're gonna call this Brickify. And we don't need the author's name. We don't need the version. And if we go to save to, we don't need the type category. We're going to keep it very simple. Then we're going to go and we're going to go dollar hip HDA accept. And this will go in there. Now, once we do this, we press create. It's going to go and think about it. It's going to bring up this window. And this window uh, is the type properties. And here, on this first page, what we're going to do is we're going to set inputs to zero and outputs to one. Okay. And instead of pressing accept, which will get rid of this window, we're going to press apply because we're going to keep working with it. We're going to click on the parameter pane and we're going to start getting things from in here. Let's press L to bring those two things together. We're going to dive into the Brickify asset. And if we want to, um, this can go over here. Uh, we can uh, hide the inputs again in here, and there's our network. So the, the, the nodes that we want to promote, the first one would be the first switch node. And we're going to take that input and we're going to drag that over to here, and it creates a parameter. And that parameter, okay, that puts that on there. We're going to press apply. And what did that do? Well, if we right click on Brickify here and we say parameters and channels and say parameters, these are the parameters for the node uh, one level up. And we see there's the select input uh, and we could make changes to that uh, using that. As a matter of fact, if we went one, the big teapot, do we go there? So that's good. So the next thing that we want to do is we want to make this a little more friendly. So let's change the name of this to Shape Capital Shape. And then we're going to go to the Menu tab and we want to use Menu. So we want to pick this, instead of this being a parameter, we're going to actually do it as a menu. So the menu needs tokens. So the first token is going to be the rubber toy. So. That would be the first menu item. And the second menu item, which is as a token of one, custom shape. Okay. And apply. And now you'll see that we have that here. So I can go between the rubber toy and the custom shape and the rubber toy. Now we're calling that a custom shape because the actual teapot is outside of the network. So we can wire other things into this later. Uh, so that's, that's why it's got that name. Now, let's do the same thing, uh, but this time, uh, oh, sorry, we just put that up there. We're gonna do that with the second switch node. And so once we've got that one, we're gonna take the input from there, we're gonna drag that over. And this time, if we click on the parameter pane, we're gonna do, call this the look. And this is gonna define the look of the, of the Brickify. So we're going to use a menu, and again, we're going to go zero, and this time color, and then we're going to go one and texture, okay? And if we look at channels, right now the, the one is the default. We're going to change that to zero, and we're going to press apply. And now we've got rubber toy color. And so if we move this out of the way, uh, and if we want to go to the texture map, we go to the texture map. If we want to go to the color, we go to the color. Okay, great. Now, 
So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on the, the color node here, which has a color widget. And so instead of being stuck with red, let's drag that parameter over. And that will allow us to use other colors. And if we press apply, you'll see that color is there. And the second thing we can do is go to the attribute uh, VOP here and take, let's just go down a little bit, that texture map. We're going to drag that over as well. Now, in this case, uh, the default texture map is the um, is the rubber toy one, but we're going to go man dot pick. We're going to go back to that one, and the reason we're going to do that is that's a default texture that will always be there. So you don't want this tool to come in and get you get an error because it can't find the texture map. So we'll start with this, and then later we'll apply the the uh, rubber toy texture back. So we go apply. And there's mandrill.pick. So if we go into here and we say, give me the texture map, we're getting the rubber, the mandrill um, texture map rather than the other one. And if we go color, we're going to go there. So as you see, we're able to build up an interface uh, using these tools. And we can go a little further with it too. It's sort of fun what you can do. We're going to go on the color tab. And there's a disable field here, and we're going to go curly brackets, look, exclamation, equal sign. So we apply that, and now if it's not color, if it's texture map, that gets grayed out. That's what the exclamation equals. So if it's not equal to zero. So when it's zero, then we get to see color. Now, similarly, we can do the opposite with the other one. So we can go Control C, go to here, Control V, and say when it's not one, then we're good to go. And apply. So when it's color, we can't assign a texture map. When it's texture map, we can't change the color. So you have control over these kinds of interface elements while you're working uh, with the asset. And if, of course, we do the texture map, this is the default, but that doesn't stop us from clicking here, going dollar hip, texture, low res, and bringing that back. So we can bring that back, but that is the, um, that's the assigned value, not the default value. So that's a little bit better from that point of view. So let's uh, press accept here. Uh, we close that because now we can go up one level and that whole interface is right here for us. And we're going to change the name of this to Brickify underscore asset. And there you go. We've got a working digital asset that allows us to plug in a different piece of geometry, uh, have either color or texture maps assigned to it. Uh, and then, you know, if we want to go into here and say this is blue, that's all possible here. But the default is still there. And to show you that the defaults are there, if we go tab Brickify, uh, the, here's another version of that asset which we can wire into. And that, uh, now it's gone back to red. And you could say, okay, give me a custom shape. Okay, there we go. So we've got two versions of the asset. And one of the things that's interesting about this is if you double click on this one, see how everything's grayed out, it's locked. Because it's locked, what that means is the people you give this to shouldn't be touching what's inside. They should only be touching what's on the outside. Now, this one is still unlocked because we're working with it, uh, but you can have multiple versions of an asset in a scene uh, doing different things. Okay, so the other thing we could do is let's uh, delete this asset. And what if we wanted to lock this one? So like we said, we go into here, we can make edits. But if we go back up here, we can actually go asset, lock asset brickify and you save any changes that go into that once you that that's locked and if i double click into there it's all i can't edit or modify that at all at this point and uh, we can go back and unlock it later but for all intents and purposes this uh this is ready to go and we can go back to our platonic or go back to here maybe change that back to the red color just so we have our standard color you're going to test the digital asset using other uh, geometry.
A digital asset can be instantiated more than once in a single scene file. You're going to use this asset on a different piece of geometry to test how it works. It's always good to have a test version available so that changes that set to the first asset can be quickly verified. The asset can also be used in other scene files once you have it working properly. So let's go back to the object level and we're going to go in here and go, we're going to go tab, test, and we're going to go squab. We're going to pick this one right here and press enter to place it at the origin. Now we can move this uh, off to the side. Let's go there. Uh, dive into it and we can set its scale to three. Okay, now we have that. We're going to right click on this output here. We're going to go brick, brickify. And we're going to put down a node and we're going to click here. Now, right now it's showing us the same uh, object we had there. What we want to do is change it from the rubber toy to a custom shape. And there we have the squab. Now the squab has been moved up quite a bit uh, because of the match size pushes it all the way up here. Now what we can also do is we can go to this node and just like we did before, go type properties. And if we go to extra files, we can save a file and go to the texture directory in the texture directory, we're going to put this diffuse map. Okay. Now, once we have that, we can go to brickify again. We can change from color to texture map, and we can go and get the texture and the squab, and press accept. So now it's picking up the colors that uh, were with the squab, so it matches that. And then, of course, we can go back to the we can just call that. And then in the Brickify, if we want to, we can change that to a texture map, and we have that. So we go back to the object level. We now have the two assets uh, with those two features. So as you can see, um, this is how you can use this asset more than once with different objects uh, within your scene and it will it's procedural so if you go into the squab and you decide to say okay let's make that six then you get a much bigger one with a lot more bricks uh, but let's change that back to three and that there's going to be about the same size excellent so now that we have this what the next step we want to do is actually to animate the bricks and see what we can do to create some animation there uh, of them building up from the ground so see you in a bit